I went from the Caribbean part of Colombia, you know, working in a coal mine, to a city 20 minutes away from London, which is one of the busiest cities in the world. And then I came to West Lafayette, Indiana, a life-changing experience for me. The Polytechnic Institute, they're really connected by technology, by the focus on a student learning, by the focus on discovery and engagement. And I feel I could make a contribution. Daniel, welcome. We're so glad that you're here in Purdue Polytechnic. You're not new to Purdue, but you are new to the Polytechnic. But before we talk about that, I wonder if you could tell us, go back to your days before college and tell us what your interests and hobbies were and maybe how those interests led you to study uh, civil engineering for your bachelor's degree. Sure, it's a pleasure. Well, it's important to mention that I grew up in a small city in the Caribbean region of Colombia, soccer land. So I grew up playing soccer, but I, I also remember playing in my backyard with my brother, building cities on the dirt, using matchbox, matchbox cars, and construction equipment. So and I, I remember a lot reading history cartoons in which I have to imagine how history was. So I have to fill the blanks. So then I grew up in, in that environment, you know, also listening soccer games on the radios, trying to imagine how things were in reality. So when it came, my decision about uh, the major that I will follow, really I put everything together as a practical person who liked to build things, but at the same time have, have, have this imagination about how things can improve, you know, human uh, way of living, progress in the cities, in the, in the country. So that's why I really studied civil engineering. After studying civil engineering for your bachelor's degree, you worked for several years as a project engineer, I believe for Drummond Company. Mm -hmm. And I looked it up, they're based in Alabama, but they also have operations in uh, your home country of Colombia as well. So I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your early career and perhaps tell us in what ways are the experiences that you gained in industry still relevant to your work today? Yes, right after I graduated, I got a, a job in the public sector, looking at contracts, and uh, and, and it was it was fine because it, it helped me understand the uh, the contractual agreements and the framework, and the legal framework of contracts in in, in construction and, and and civil engineering. But really, when I moved to the private sector and worked for Drummond, in which there was the opportunity to build uh, su support structures in a place that didn't have any. It was a uh, mining operations in Colombia. The company was, uh, as, as you mentioned, from the US. So I, have to, I could practice my English. And then uh, I was able to design and build airstrips, um, warehouses, office buildings, even military barracks. Because in Colombia, that was important back in the 90s. So, uh, and again, when, when you have to do all those things when you have no uh, way of even bringing materials to site in, in, the, in the same way that you, that you do today or here. So then I, I was, I really learned a lot of lessons and I, and I think it, it helped me understand the culture of collaboration, teamwork, interdisciplinary uh, uh, teams. And, and I think that's, that's, those were really great lessons learned. And um, so that's how I started my professional career. Then uh, I applied to grad school and I started my academic career from there. You went to grad school at the University of Reading yes. and then here at Purdue. That's correct. When I was applying to, to uh, programs, uh, I discovered that uh, master's degrees in England were shorter, were only one year. In the, U in the US were two years. So. Also, again, coming coming back to this, uh, to my passion for soccer, you know, uh, you know, in the in the UK, I could go, I could I could follow, you know, what they call football uh, teams there, and I could I could watch games. So I, I, that influenced my decision to go there. But also, you know, construction in Europe was also something that that um, intrigued me at the time, and architecture especially, and the ability to to uh, be in Europe for one year. So that's why I went there. Once I was there, I started doing research. Um, 
and interacting with researchers from Purdue University from in, in the construction program. And uh, so as, as time went on, um, I, uh, I saw the possibility of continuing that research through a PhD program here at Purdue University. So then I moved from uh, Reading, England to West Lafayette, Indiana. How much of a culture shock was that? Or had you already had the culture shock when you went from Columbia to, to the UK? You, you are correct. Uh, I, I, um, I went from you know, uh, the Caribbean part of Colombia, you know, working in a coal mine, to uh, a, a city 20 minutes away from London, which is one of the busiest cities in the world. And then uh, I came to West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, it, it, was, it was practically a, a life-changing experience for me, but something that I truly believe changed my life. I would imagine then that those experiences that you had studying and working in three different countries must have given you unique insight and given you feelings about why you would say that's important for our own students to get those cultural immersions and uh, possibly study abroad experiences. Would that be true? Oh, yes, that's, that's correct. I uh, interacted a lot with international students who uh, shared their experiences in a common setting we were studying a master's in construction management. So the construction industry in, in, in those countries was different, in the UK was different, in the US was different. I mean, they have many similarities. But I, I learned a lot from those experiences. So when we were, when we were in teams trying to uh, work on a project or, or, or a academic experience, it, it was very uh, enriching to me to understand that, in addition to the experiences that I learned here in the States. So th those were great, and, and my research was also um, very important at that time. Uh, but something that truly uh, influenced me a lot was my interactions with local students here when I work as a uh, resident advisor at Hillenbrand Hall here. May we please talk a little bit about your time at Georgia Tech? Yes. So before you returned to Purdue this year, you spent 16 years at Georgia Tech. How do you feel that you evolved as a professor and as a leader during your time there? Yes, as after I graduated from from Purdue University, my PhD here. Um, I, after a short stint in, in, in Ohio, I went to uh, Atlanta, to Georgia Tech, and basically I did all my academic career there. I went, I started as an assistant professor, we, we went all the way to professor, and uh, became a, a, part, a school chair for almost 11 years. So I spent there a total of 16 years in Georgia Tech. Uh, really, uh, it was, it was, uh, a place where I grew professionally, and, and I, I believe uh, I helped uh, the school there grow, and um, and it, w it was a great opportunity to meet a lot of uh, faculty and students who were interested in technology. So you share a disciplinary connection with our School of Construction Management Technology, mm -hmm. but other than that, what sparked your interest in joining us here in Purdue Polytechnic? At Georgia Tech, I was working in a college that was also very diverse in terms of disciplines. I mean, we have construction, architecture, even music technology, industrial design, planning. So to me, the Polytechnic Institute was not that different in that sense. There are different disciplines that in appearance, they are not that, that similar. But when you look closer, they're really connected by technology, by the you know the focus on a student learning by the focus on discovery and engagement and that's something I felt familiar with I felt attracted to and I felt I could make a contribution using the experience I have learned not only in my professional life but in my academic life also at Georgia Tech. So you've been with us for about two months at the time of our recording. What stands out about what you've learned so far? Well, I see a lot of opportunities here. First of all, 20 years have passed since I left as a, after I graduated, but when I came back, something that did never disappeared was this, I would say, passion for Purdue University. You know, this immense pride about the university, something that I, I remember, but it was, you know, it's very nice to be back. Also, the people are willing to help, something that, that I'm most impressed with, uh, but also, but when it comes to the Polytechnic, I see an inspiring mission, 
you know, to, as I mentioned before. But at the same time, I see a bright future in the sense we have, an, uh, you know, the gateway um, facility, and we have a statewide programs. We have the ability to influence the state of Indiana. We have the ability to conduct research in different disciplines that are connected by technology and by the user experience and uh, experiential learning. So that's, those are really key ingredients when we are trying to um, influence the economy locally, regionally, and, and nationwide. So th those are the things that I'm truly interested in. I believe they, there's a lot of potential here in the Polytechnic. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the Engineering and Polytechnic Gateway Complex, yes. which I should note uh, will be named Dudley Hall and Lambertus Hall, which uh, are scheduled to open this coming January, January 2023. So a huge expansion of instructional space for our college, many new state-of-the-art labs. What do you find most exciting about our upcoming gateway complex? Of course, I'm biased when I say that the construction uh, labs there are fantastic. And, but that's not the only, uh, see, uh, the, the, the only facility I see as impressive. I believe the advanced manufacturing labs are also fantastic for the students, the proximity to engineering research, the proximity to logistics. Because uh, those are the disciplines and the, and the experiences that will shape the future of uh, the economy in the state and in the, in the country. You know, the ability to uh, learn about automation and robotics and how it impacts construction, manufacturing, uh, logistics, transportation, and, and other disciplines. You mentioned uh, research, you mentioned engineering, and of course, one of the goals of the new Gateway Complex is to provide new opportunities for our college, Purdue Polytechnic, to collaborate with Purdue's College of Engineering. I wonder if you could talk about what do you hope that a closer bond between our two colleges will accomplish? I believe we have common interests, but at the same time we have differences in the sense uh, that we are looking more at applied uh, uses of technology. We are looking at, 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 at learning. We are looking at the jobs of today. However, our faculty are prepared for not only the jobs of today, but the jobs of tomorrow. And uh, so, so that's something that uh, I believe makes us very proud of, of our mission. But at the same time, I think we can interact with engineering, and we will interact with engineering in, in, in instances of ad advanced manufacturing, uh, construction technology, uh, common, common things, not, not only looking at the at the design of the technology, but also the application of the technology. And that's where I think the, we, we, we kind of overlap. And, and that's, a, that's a great thing for students, I mean, the, the, great, the great beneficiaries of, of these collaborations. There's new synergies to be found. There's new synergies to be found, yeah. right. What would you say your priorities are for your first one or even two years as our dean? Well, as I see uh, continuing uh, advancing the mission of the Polytechnic, uh, looking at opportunities to uh, leverage the presence that we have statewide, so so we can improve the um, opportunities for for the state to advance in, in its in its uh, economic uh, activities and and uh, also uh, here and in, in, in West Lafayette, of course, uh, we, we want to uh, look at uh, the benefit of the degrees we offer, how we can make them uh, relevant to the uh, you know to the um, Population we serve, and look for for uh, other opportunities. There, there are majors, for example, that didn't exist when I was student here. For example, cybersecurity, uh, drone. We have a major called drone. Unmanned aerial systems. Unmanned aerial systems. You see, so so those didn't exist when I was student here. So in 20 years from now, there will be majors that that will be popular, but we don't know about them now. So the qu the, the question is how we prepare our faculty and and staff actually to to be uh, you know when that time comes that we, we need to we need to start teaching something that will will be uh, important at that time so that's what that's my that's the mission I have is to make sure that we follow the trends and and we create those opportunities for the faculty and staff that ultimately our students will benefit from what might you like to say to Purdue Polytechnic's faculty staff students maybe even alumni to help everyone just get to know you well the the, the uh, Reach out, you know. I am 
willing to uh, meet everybody in person, you know, so I know it's, it's hard to do, but I'm willing to do that. I think it's important that I meet every single faculty member, every single staff member, even the students and an advisory board and alumni. So that's that's my goal really is to, to try to meet them and, and exchange ideas. When we start talking with them, I think I will get more ideas to to uh, to improve the Polytechnic, to improve the experience for students and for faculty and staff here. I'm sure you're well aware we have our college has many connections in industry, partnerships with industry for things like senior capstone projects. Have you had a chance yet or are planning to meet with some of our industry partners? Oh yes, yes. I already met uh, quite a few industry partners and I look forward to meeting even more so we can improve the experiences for students. I think uh, Purdue Polytechnic is lucky to have so many accomplished alumni in the industry, academia, in government and I think we look forward to, uh, to interacting more with them. I look forward to do that personally in the future. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to talk about? I would say that uh, I feel uh, very honored to be here and it's, it's nice to come back after 20 years, but it's even better to know that the same motivation I had when I came to Purdue, I see that as, as a similar motivation this morning when I was greeting the new faculty who are joining us this new year. So they, are, um, they have a lot of uh, expectations, dreams about their future career. So, you know, so I saw the same motivation that brought me to Purdue then. So it's something that we haven't lost and, and I feel very good about that. Mm-hmm.